Mr. Praise the Lord, this is Preacher Warren. Listen, I want to address some issues. I got some comments. I don't know if this is a Hebrew or Israelite, uh, whatever religion you are, but I like to address certain comments that a lot of times people make on my YouTube channel, which is normal. It comes with the territory when you're preaching the gospel. I've been preaching God's word since I was six years old, so I dealt with all kind of religions. Praise God. But it's not about a religion. It's about a relationship with God. Because you can have a religion and still not have a relationship with God. Many of you got religion. You know about the Europeans. You, you know your Bible. Yet you're still smoking and drinking. Still depressed. Still taking drug overdoses. But yet you know your Bible. But it does not mean that you have the Bible in your heart. The basic construction before leaving earth. You can have book knowledge of the word of God. The devil knows the Bible better than you and I. But he doesn't live it because he's evil, he's wicked, he's a liar, and the father of lies, the father of lies, and the truth is not in him. I want to address a statement that one of the, I believe he might have been the Hebrew Israelite, uh, seemed like he got mad because I was preaching about Jesus, which I can care less whether you're mad or not, how Jesus can heal the brokenhearted. Those of you who got abused by your fathers and your mothers, how he can heal a broken heart. I'm a living witness. He healed my broken heart. In other words, you don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is the Holy Ghost. So Hebrew Israelite, he comes, I believe I believe he was a Hebrew Israelite because I dealt with people like this before. You know, I've been doing street ministry for years. So I ran across all kind of debates. Don't matter to me because I, I still take a stand for Yeshua HaMessiah. Whether you call him Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMessiah, we're still talking about the same beat. Now he says, uh, the fake Jesus. He said, Jesus is fake. He said, man, he's Baal. So I'm, I came back in the comment and was like, well, what Jesus are you talking about? Because the Jesus that I preach about is not fake. Well, you're talking about a white Jesus. Well, first of all, I've said I'm not talking about a white Jesus. I'm talking about a holy Jesus. Now, if you read the book of Revelations, chapter 1, uh, go to verse 14. Uh, the Bible said his hair was like wool. His hair is white as snow. Eyes as flame of fire. Voices, many waters. I'm talking about that Jesus. I'm talking about a holy Jesus. I'm not talking about a white Jesus. I'm not talking about a, a black Jesus. I'm talking about a good Jesus. I'm talking about a holy Jesus. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, my sister. You're too blessed to be stressed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, someone said, Well, you saying that it don't matter what color he was? Well, the Bible doesn't talk about what color he was in the word of God when he walked the earth. Uh, if you read the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 14, it talks about how Jesus looked now in his glorified body. But when he walked the earth, it doesn't talk about what color he was. Now, we know that Jesus Christ, uh, when the angel of the Lord told Mary and Joseph to flee into Egypt because Herod wanted to kill the firstborn, the devil wanted to get to Jesus before he grew up because he knew he was a messiah. He tried to stop his destiny, but he couldn't do it. We know they fleed into Egypt. Egypt is in Africa, where the great Sahara Desert is at, where the hieroglyphics is written on the pyramids, where they worship false gods. So now he blended in with the Africans. So that means Jesus, I believe, had color. I don't believe he had blonde hair or blue eyes. I never preached that Jesus had blonde hairs and blue eyes. Maybe the Europeans did. But nowhere in the Bible, nowhere in the Word of God where it says Jesus had blonde hair and blue eyes. The only time they talked about Jesus, his appearance was in the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 14. Like I just quoted it a couple seconds ago. Okay, but that's how he looked in his glorified body. So I'm not right now, I'm not talking about his color. I'm talking about his character. What's the sense of knowing whether Jesus was white or black, but yet you don't have the character of Jesus? Uh, you don't have the love of Jesus. Now, you're saying that the Bible is a white man's Bible. Well, I said, well, I'm a black man, so that's my Bible, too. Basic instruction before leaving earth. So he talking about, well, how can you talk about the slave master? Well, first of all, I'm not a slave master. Jesus never preached. Uh, uh, he never preached promoting slavery. Actually, he preached against slavery. He said, I come to set the captive free. So what Jesus are you talking about? You're talking about a different Jesus. There's all kind of fake Jesus. It's called it, they call it, I, I preached a message a long time ago called Beware of the Counterfeit Jesus. Satan transformed himself as an angel of light. The Bible warns us. It talks about it in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. 
It said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see whether they be of God, because many false prophets have gone into the world to see them many. You may say, Well, you a false prophet. Well, I never claimed to be a prophet. I'm a preacher, a servant of the Lord. Some people call me a prophet, but you don't ever hear me calling myself a prophet. Oh, praise the Lord. I let the Lord get all the glory. Now, now Jesus even warned us in the book of Matthew, chapter number 24. Go to verse 5. He warned us about false prophets, false Christs that would come in his name saying, I am the Christ and shall deceive many. Now, they are fake Christs. Those Christs are fake. I'm not preaching about the fake Jesus. But you said that Jesus is Baal. Well, first of all, you way off. Look what the Bible declares. I'm going to give you some scriptures. This is not coming from my own spirit. This is coming from the Holy Spirit. Let me give you the Bible. I don't know what Bible you're reading. You must be reading a different Bible. Look what it says here. The book of Revelations, chapter number 2, verse number 6. Go to verse 14, also to verse 15. Look what Jesus said. Now, you're saying that Jesus was Baal, but look at this now. Look what the Bible said in Revelation, chapter number 2, verse 6. Now, Jesus Christ was against Baal. Jesus Christ never promoted Baal. So when you're saying that Jesus Christ is Baal, I don't know what Bible you're reading because he in the book of Revelations chapter 2, verse 6, it says uh, he hated the deeds of the Nicolonians. Also chapter 4, uh, go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 6, also 14 to verse 15. It said he hated the deeds of the Nicolonians. Why? They denied the true faith and held the doctrine of Balaam who taught Israel to sin by eating foods sacrificed to idols and committing sexual immorality. Well, Jesus was against Baal. So what Jesus are you talking about? You, you're talking about the fake Jesus. The one I'm preaching about is the real Jesus, Yahshua HaMessiah. Okay? Now you say, well, he's about the Catholics. They... Oh, 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 oh. They got child molesters. Well, yeah, I know about the child molesters up in the Catholic Church. I know about that. I'm not stupid to that. But every Catholic's not a child molester. I even met some Holy Ghost field Catholics who believe in the apostolic faith. Okay, so this Jesus, you say he's Baal, but Jesus was against Baal. Revel the real Jesus I'm talking about. Revelations chapter 2, verse 6. 14 to verse 15. I'm going to read it again. It said he hated the deeds of the Nicolonians. Why? They denied the true faith and held the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Israel to sin by eating foods sacrificed to idols. They committed sexual immorality. Well, there it is. So now what Jesus are you talking about? You're t I'm not preaching about the fake Jesus. I'm preaching about the real Jesus. Now, you're saying that Christianity is fake. No, it's not. Not the Christianity I'm showing because, first of all, there's a lot of people who call themselves Christians who are not real Christians. Okay, I'm going to talk about it. Because it, now, I'm a Holy Ghost field Christian of the apostolic faith, according to the book of Acts, chapter number 2, when they received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Many of you ain't preaching about that. Many of you just saying, well, salvation was just only for the Jews. Well, that was back in the Old Testament. But ever since Jesus Christ came, he came to die for the Jews and the Gentiles, not only just the Jews. Now, we got white Jews and we got black Jews. Hitler is in hell for killing six million Jews up in Germany, had them thrown in the gas chamber. That was a shame. That was evil. That was wicked. Well, now he's burning in hell, just like the Ku Klux Klan who tormented our black people in racism during the slavery days. When they died, they in hell along with Hitler. Okay, so what are you talking about? Let me tell you something about this Jesus I'm serving, the Christianity. First of all, back in the days of the church, when the early church, there's many who received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. You read the book of Acts chapter number 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. For the remissions of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But this is the promise that God has for you and your children. Okay. Now, there was many Christians back then who was deceived by idol worshipers. Okay. Well, God is against idol worship. Jesus is against Baal. Jesus is against Jezebel. According to Revelations chapter 2 verse 20. Read it. 
This is not the fake Jesus. This is the real Yahshua HaMessiah. Whether you call him Yahshua HaMessiah, Yah, or Jesus, we're talking about the same Jesus. Jesus is not Zeus. Jesus never preached about Zeus. Jesus even had something against Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates, who were Greek philosophers. A lot of them worshipped Greek gods. They were false gods. Okay, a lot of them, this is how the Olympics originated. It originated when the Greeks was honoring their false god Zeus on the mountain named, called Mount Olympus. This is how the Olympics originated. Okay, Zeus is a myth. Jesus is not a myth. Jesus is real. There's no documentary in history that Jesus, uh, that rather Zeus ever exists. He was just a statue. He was just a myth. Jesus existed. So I told one of the Muslims, he said, Jesus Christ was just only a prophet, but he never existed. I said, that don't make sense. If you say he was a prophet, how are you going to tell me he never existed? That don't make sense. If someone don't exist, then he just don't exist. How can you say he was just a prophet, only a prophet, but now you're telling me that he don't exist? Okay, that's, that's confusing. Look, I had to pray for that Muslim's mind because the enemy deceived him. That don't make sense. Jesus Christ, he was much more than just a prophet. Yes, he was a prophet, but he was a Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. Isaiah prophesied about Jesus in the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. He said, he shall be called the wonderful counselor. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. You don't need no drug overdose. He shall be called the prince of peace. He shall be called the what? The mighty God. Oh, I don't believe in that. Well, that's your belief. I'm not going to get mad at you because you don't believe, but I don't want to just believe in Jesus. I came to know him. Or to come to know Jesus, then you must have a relationship with him by repenting from your sins. Now, I want to leave you with this. You're saying Christianity is pagan. Well, there was a lot of Christians who went into paganism. They started off with Jesus. They started off with the truth, but they departed from the faith. They left the truth, not all of them. This is why Apostle Paul says so in the book of Galatians. He said, who have hindered you that ye shall run well? Who have bewitched you? Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, what the Apostle Paul said. Apostle Paul was the one who was chosen by Jesus Christ to preach to the Jews and the Gentiles according to Acts chapter number 9 and Acts chapter number 10. Read the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Uh, Paul the Apostle Paul, who was the chief apostle, of course, Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of the church. He's the boss of all Pentecost, like Bishop Hugh Rogers preached. He's the source of all Pentecost. So Apostle Paul took orders from Jesus Christ to write this to the church of Galatians. He said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made you free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Apostle Paul was admonishing the church because he began to see that many church people have left the faith and begin to worship idols. They've been bewitched. They've been deceived. So those are ones who are pagan are the Christians who left worshiping God and begin to worship idols just like Israel did. Or they started off real, but they took God's glory and gave it to a statue when God said, Thou shalt not have no other God before me. Thou shalt not worship any graven images. Okay, now, I just wanted to break that down to you. Now, you're talking about the Christians are pagan. Okay, do you not know that a lot of black Christians, we thank God for the white Christians, we got Christians in every race. But I'm talking to these Hebrew Israelites who came to my YouTube channel. I'm going to respond to what you're saying. I ain't going to let this go. There's a whole lot of black Christians who made a difference in the world. I'm talking about black African-American Christians. I'm going to give you some history that y'all don't talk about. A lot of this stuff is not even put in the history books. And a lot of these things I'm going to talk about it is in the history books. Although they're trying to take our history out of the schools now. But we're going to stay whole. We're going to uh, stay firm to our history. Our black African-American history. Black African-American history. Look. Now, y'all didn't know something about Azusa Street. Azusa is spelled A-Z-U-S-A. -A. Azusa Street was a revival, was a historic series of revival meetings that took place in Los Angeles, California. It was William J. Seymour, an African-American preacher. The revival began on April the 9th, 1906, and continued until roughly 1950. Now, that was way back in the slavery days. Do you not know there was miracles happening back then? This is not fake now. This is no stuff that was fake like you see these fake miracles now. Do you know there was people, God was using these people 
to make people rise from the dead. There was people who had no alms. Alms was growing out. Some of y'all never seen miracles. I know there's a lot of these Hebrew Israelites. I don't understand how you can talk about the laws of Moses, but don't talk about the miracles that God worked through Moses. What about the miracles? What about freedom? Jesus, God used Moses to free Israel out of Egypt. So if you're going to talk about the law, you're talking about slavery, we're talking about freedom. He's also a God of freedom. Oh, come on. One of the reasons why God turned many of them over into slavery was because of their rebelliousness against God. Now, look at this. This is called Azusa Street. Back in Azusa Street, people was getting healed, set free, saved and delivered. People was getting out of wheelchairs. Not just only God was using the blacks, he was using the whites. It was the blacks and the whites who was coming together. Now, this is during slavery day. Look it up in history. It was called Azusa Street. They was having street revivals. There were so many people that was coming back to life in the funeral home. That even the funeral home director got upset because they was making them go out of business. This is a true story. Limbs was growing out of people who had no arms, who had no legs. There was little girls, 13 years old, uh, teenage boys in their teenage years, in their 20s, who was laying hands on the sick. And they was getting healed because in these street revivals, they was fasting and praying, and Jesus began to use them in miracles. Uh, it was like the day of Pentecost, remind me, of the early church. Now, this is back in the day of slavery, when the whites and the blacks was coming together. Now, this is what Jesus would do. See, Jesus brings people together. That's why he said, love one another, as Christ said, love you. Now, this, now many of you don't know about this. I'm going to give you some history. This is back. And this is way back, it started on April the 9th in 1915, Azusa Street. Do you know there was white people getting the Holy Ghost? Do you know there was people getting saved? Slaves was getting saved, slave masters was getting saved. You don't talk about that, that's not in the history books because the devil don't want you to know about that. Miracles was happening, now this was Christians, now who you saying who are pagan? You say they worship Baal. Why would Baal set the captive free? Baal doesn't do that because Baal is of the devil. Now watch this. They had another woman of God back in the day in slavery. How about Sojourner Truth? Sojourner Truth was a Christian. Let me tell you about Sojourner Truth. 1797, the first known, uh, her name first was Isabella. That was her name, Isabella Montefi. She was born in New York City in 1977. Sojourner Truth, she won the first lawsuit doing slavery. God used Sojourner Truth to do missionary work and spread the gospel. Now, this is during slavery days. People was getting saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, even back in the days of slavery. God even used Sojourner Truth. Then God used Harriet Tubman. Well, let's talk about it, Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman was called the woman Moses. Harriet Tubman was a woman of God that God used Harriet Tubman. Do you not know God used Harriet Tubman to free 300 slaves with the Underground Railroad? Now, she was a Christian. Do you call that bail? It was Christians that God, black Christians as well as white Christians who God used to make a difference in slavery. This during slavery day. Now this way back, uh, Harriet Tubman was a woman Moses. Oh my God, Harriet Tubman was a woman of God. He had Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was a Christian. God used Frederick Douglass to preach the word. This is during slavery day. You call that bail? That's not fake. Most of these people that was used by God during the days of slavery to make a difference in the world were Christians who love Jesus. Harriet Tubman, she even said that when she talked to Jesus, Jesus gave Harriet Tubman the strength to free all those slaves through the Underground Railroad and she never got caught. Now let's talk about that. How was that bail? How is that fake? That's not fake. That Jesus is real. The Jesus you're talking about is another Jesus that the devil can come in the form of Christ too. But, we, but we're not talking about the fake Jesus. We're talking about the real Jesus. He sets the captive free. He said, I come to heal the brokenhearted. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Other words, you don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is the Holy Ghost. Uh, now, I'm not saying all Hebrew Israelite or Hebrew Israel or black Hebrew Israelites are murderers, but check this out. Do you not know six years after Martin Luther King was assassinated, 
Do you not know there was a Hebrew Israelite, a black young man, 23 years old, named Marcus Wayne Genot? His last name is spelled C-H-E-N-A-U-L-T. It's not even worth it because I'm so disgusted by this. Do you not know this man came in Ebenezer Baptist Church and killed Martin Luther King's mother in a Baptist church? Now, this was a black man. You got black on black crime going on every day. That's going on now. So now, if you're going to talk about uh, the white races, which every white person is not racist, then let's, why are you not preaching them? to the black people about black on black crime. Why, why are you not telling these black young men to love each other and black young women to stop being jealous of one another and stop stabbing each other? Why are you not talking about that? You got to be versatile. It was a black Hebrew Israelite named Marcus Wayne Genote murdered Martin Luther King's mother in a church. Now what kind of message is that? Okay, did Baal tell him to do that? If you're saying that Jesus that we're worshiping is fake, okay, so what God are you worshiping? God, now, now this man was a black Hebrew Israelite. Are you saying that you're promoting murder? Black on black crime? I don't like blacks even killing whites. I don't even like whites killing blacks. We ought to be coming together because if the media was to hit this earth right now, we all going down if God doesn't have mercy. The devil wants us to fight each other. He wants us to be divided. Many of you don't even believe that hell is real. Hell is real. You say, oh, well, well, we got hell here on earth. Yes, we do. But hell down there is even worse than hell here on earth. Read the book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 14 and Revelation chapter 20 verse 14, which talks about the lake of fire, which is even worse than hell. Now, this was a black Hebrew Israelite. I'm not saying all Hebrew Israelites are murderers. We're not saying that. But I'm telling you, are you telling me that it's okay for blacks to kill blacks? You should be going up in the hood. I started preaching the gospel when I was six years old. I'm, I remember the time years ago, because I've been preaching in the streets and churches for years. And my ministry is just still now growing. I remember when that thing happened to Trayvon Martin and George Floyd. I, uh, you know, I remember when that thing happened to Trayvon Martin and George Floyd and many of our black young people who got murdered by police brutality. We're not saying all cops are like that. But now we got black cops even killing young black people too. We got to pray for the cops that they repent. They have to repent just like I got to repent. We all need to repent to God and stop the killing and let us all unite and let us not fight and let's get with Jesus Christ. Oh, and let us unite. Let it be unity in the community. Now watch this. Now when that thing happened with Trayvon Martin when he was murdered and we also with George Floyd and many others, uh, this is how the Black Lives Movement came about. Thank God for our black African-American women as well. They, they went out there and marched against racism. They did protests against the police brutality. Okay, I was hoping I'd see the black Hebrew Israelites out there. I mean, y'all, many of y'all are seven feet tall. You got the muscles. You got the warrior outfit on. You're, you're loud and you're bold. I was hoping I'd see them out there marching. I didn't see not one. Now, maybe they was out there. I didn't see it. I didn't see them together as soldiers. What happened to them? I, I, I was hoping I'd see them. I didn't see not one. I saw little children out there, teenagers protesting. People in their 20s, even old mothers was out there and old fathers. I said, what happened to the black Hebrew Israelites? We're not trying to put you down. I'm just going to tell the truth. You are there preaching against slavery and talking about slave masters. Okay, so this is the time to come against it. I didn't see them out there. They waited until it died down. Then I saw the Hebrew Israelites up on, up on Third Avenue in the Bronx. They in the shopping area, somewhere in the shopping mall, scaring people. You had these guys like seven feet, huge, screaming at people. They have their mantra, huh? Okay, turn around, my face, huh? What was all that? Where was, where was you at doing protests in Black Lives Matter? I didn't see y'all, none of y'all out there. You're gonna wait till it died down when we all didn't fought for it. I mean, there was even black little children who was marching the streets. Martin Luther King loved the Jesus. I know you say he was communist, but I know uh, that's another story, but he was a Christian man. Okay, it was many black Christian leaders who made a difference in the world so you can have civil rights, so we can have our rights. So who are you to come along and say that we'll take it? 
that Christianity is pagan, that the Jesus that we serve in is pagan, where he was the one who gave strength to many blacks and whites to make a difference in the world because he said, ye are the light of the world. He called us to be the light of the world and not to be the darkness of the world. He, came, he called us to make a difference. He chose us to bear fruits. We're talking about character right now. So, so you can't persuade me to believe that Jesus is Baal when I've seen too many miracles happening. I've seen blind eyes coming open. I'm not talking about fake miracles. Jesus healed my sick body. When I was eight years old, I supposed to been dead on the operation table. Jesus healed me. That wasn't Bell who did that. That was Jesus. That's not fake. So you're not going to persuade me to believe in your garbage. When I had too much experience with Jesus Christ, and I don't just only believe in him. I know he's a miracle worker. I know. I feel like preaching now. I know he's a miracle worker because I had experience with God. I'm not going to keep living up in the past. Because first of all, you're talking about all this slavery going on. Listen, you're talking to a black man here. I'm just as black as you are. I know about slavery. You're not telling me nothing new. But then, let's talk about the black on black crime. You got black people killing each other every day. You got black folk kill, calling each other niggas every day. You're not my nigga. You're supposed to be my brother. You're supposed to be my sister, not my nigga. Here back in the days of Martin Luther King when they did boycotts uh, and, and, and had Rosa Parks, who was the secretary of the NAACP, and they had uh, uh, Mega Evans, who was the head of the NAACP. I know a lot of them was Masons because I don't believe in the Masonic Lodges because a lot of them are worshiping uh, another being. But that's another story. But God knew their hearts. But there was many of them who were Christians that God used to make a difference to get your civil rights. So now you can stand out in the street and read your Bible. Jacob, have you love? He's so heavy hated. But yeah, you calling us Christians fake. And we worship in Baal, but it was the Christians who God used to make a difference for you to go out here in the street and have freedom of speech to talk about your religion. Most, I'm not saying it was all Christians, but most of them was Christians. You got a lot of them talking about, well, you, you got to have a beard. No, you don't. Look at Christmas addicts. He didn't have a beard. God used many Christian leaders to make a difference for our black race. Christian leaders. Martin Luther King Jr., Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman, she loved Jesus. She said Jesus appeared to her. Jesus was the one who gave her strength to free all them slaves, and she never got caught. That wasn't Baal. That was Jesus. Come on, study your history. If you're going to talk about the history, talk about that. There was little children who was marching in the street of Montgomery in Alabama. There was not no black Hebrew Israelites out there with the soldiers outfit. There was little children marching the streets of Montgomery fighting against racism. There was even little children going to school and being spat upon. They had to walk through violence just to fight for our civil rights. Black people back in the 60s fighting for our civil rights and we have the nerve to shoot each other. Black on black crime. We have the nerve to talk about the white races and we got black people killing each other. Why don't you talk about that? There was black people who loved Jesus that Jesus empowered to fight against racism. Talk about that. That's not Baal. Baal ain't going to tell them to do that. Oh, some of you may get mad, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Little children marching the streets. Come on. But then when they had the George Floyd thing, when that horrible thing happened to George Floyd, I was hoping I'd see some black Hebrew Israelites who are marching the soldiers out there. I'm not trying to put you down. Maybe there may have been some Hebrew Israelites out there that I didn't see them. I was one of the ones who led the marches. Back in Harlem, I was born in Harlem. Preached the gospel in Harlem since I was six years old, raised in the Bronx and in Harlem. I was one of the ones at night leading the march, and they asked me to have prayer in the streets. Okay, I didn't see none of these black Hebrew Israelites. They might have been out there, but I didn't see them. That's back in the days of Trayvon Martin when that happened to him. And then when that thing happened to George Floyd, I was hoping I'd see some of the black Hebrew Israelites out there. I didn't see them. They waited till it died down. Now you were in the street. You're going to the shopping mall or somewhere into a park around a little kid screaming, Here come have you love, and these white people are... Where was you at doing the Black Lives Matter in the march? You had even old people marching in the Black Lives Matter. So now you up there... Huh? Oh, fish. Jacob oh. Hat. I like the Black Panthers. The Black Panthers was out there during the 70s. 
Now, even though President Hoover called the Black Panthers terrorists, they was not terrorists. The only reason why they started that movement because black people was being terrorized by many of the white racists. Oh, come on, come on, by the Ku Klux Klan. If it had not been no Ku Klux Klan, if it was no racism, there would never have been a Black Panther. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, at least they fed the homeless people. They had the big afros back in the days. They'd give black, the black people pride. I'm not, uh, I mean, I agree with all their tactics. But they was out there fighting against racism on the fields. Man, they got killed. I'm so sorry that by that. I don't like all this killing. I don't like all this murder. I wish we can just all get along and love one another and stop all this hate. There's too much hate, even in church. God don't like all this hate. If you're going to hate something, hate evil. If you're going to hate something, hate evil and love the good. Do good and not evil. But I'm trying to get you, I'm trying to make a point. There's a lot of Christians who you call fake, who Jesus used, Yahshua HaMashiach, to make a difference in this world so you can have civil rights and you can be out there and have freedom of speech. So don't tell me that Jesus Christ is Baal because he's not because like I just read earlier, Jesus is against Baal. He's against idol worship. According to the book of Revelations like I gave you. Okay? Praise the Lord. You don't have to agree with me but it's the truth. Because the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Let's love one another and stop all the hate and stop all the jealousy and stop all the witchcraft. Even around this time, they focus this up there doing witchcraft and black magic, trying to break up somebody's marriage. You got black folk doing it. You got white people doing it. You got people in every race. The devil got folk in every race. That's why God wants us to repent from our sins because we don't know when our time is going to come. Tomorrow is not promised to you or me. That's why God said today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart because he's coming again and every race is going to stand before God. Uh, yes, I'm against racism too, but this thing go beyond race. This thing go beyond racism. It's, it, this is a spiritual warfare that's going on between good and evil. It's a spiritual warfare that's going on between the devil and angels but angels will always come on top we're wrestling against spiritual demonic forces hallelujah and i want to make heaven my home i want to be with jesus when he comes back if family won't go you go if your husband won't get saved you get saved if your wife won't get saved you get saved if your children don't want to get saved you get god for yourself because we all going to stand before god and i want my name to be written in the lamb's book of life hallelujah have a great night tonight, daughter. God is with you. Good night. Good night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ.